Welcome to Face to Face. This is a show about change and about what's next. It's a show that wants to ask questions, peel back the layers of our average everyday experience, and go beyond scratching the surface. We interview amazing people with incredible ideas and stories who have done wild, weird, and wonderful things. Remember that imagination shared create collaboration, and collaboration creates community, and community inspires social change. I'm David Peck, and this is Face to Face. Well, my guest today is a returning guest to Face to Face. Her name is Miranda Bailey, and she's a filmmaker. She's a producer, writer, director. She's, as she says in the in the interview, she's she's put her whole foot right into the business, and maybe someday going to be setting up an art house theater on the moon. I know it sounds a little crazy, but but Miranda has a crystal ball, so she has access to things that you and I can only dream of. So listen into the interview coming up. We talk about uh, a new, well, it's not that new, actually, the cherrypicks.com. I think it's in its third year. It's, it's. I hope she doesn't mind me saying this. It's kind of Rotten Tomatoes-ish, uh, but it's, it's about women, and it leans in a very particular way. It's about uh, a perspective. It's about uh, a way of seeing the world that I think you're going to want to look into. So check it out, thecherrypicks, P-I-C-K-S dot com. We'll be telling you more about that in the uh, interview and and talking about movies and about uh, uh, gender and about uh, positions of power, I suppose, and about the state of uh, the business. But really, uh, and, and just talking about some some fun movies that are out there right now. And one of, one of the things that I what that I really loved uh, uh, about the site and the way that it, it kind of works, uh, the way that the Cherry Picks works is there's a uh, different classification. So there's a run, don't walk. There's a definitely worth the ticket. There's a catch it from your couch and there's the pits. And, but as, as those are sort of four different ways of looking at, you know, new films and so on, uh, or older films, the critics uh, that appear on the site. But as Miranda is so uh, quick to point out, they, even even the sort of the lowest uh, level rating is still uh, something uh, w- worth seeing. So, so uh, yeah, check it out. It's a lot of fun. Uh, we'll, we'll be stepping into it in just a, a few uh, seconds. And don't forget davidpecklive.com for more information about my writing and speaking. You can get a copy of Real Change is Incremental there. I'd love it if you purchased a copy of that and then even more i would really appreciate you leaving a review and uh if you uh, want to get behind what we're doing here at face to face you can do that through patreon you can support us that way if you can't and i totally get that uh, we'd really appreciate a review on itunes it's really hard to get noticed on itunes there's a lot of podcasts out there right now and if you could leave a review for us we're coming up on our 500th interview if you can believe that it's crazy talk but we've been around a while and we're going to continue going uh for well, I, for a long time, hopefully, as long as I think there's movies uh, to to uh, think about and talk about and, and to, to, to dive into. You can also advertise on Face to Face, and we have a newsletter uh, that you can sign up for. You can advertise there. We have banner ads on the site, and of course, you can advertise on the podcast itself as well. And don't forget, too, rabble.ca, where uh, there's a whole host of other uh, writers and thinkers and journalists. It's a platform that I'm Face to Face is uh, available on. And uh, I think that's about it. Uh, did I say that I'd really love a review? I'm kidding. A uh, review on iTunes would be wonderful. And sign up for the newsletter, face to face live.ca. Check, uh, check us out there. And coming right up, Miranda Belly talking about film and about women and about uh, this website, this, this, this new approach, uh, thecherrypicks.com. Well, welcome to Face to Face. We're joined by a very special guest with us here today. We have Miranda Bailey here to talk about a, a couple of new things, and I'm sure we're going to get into a, a whole lot of uh, otherness. Is that even a word, Miranda? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for thanks for joining you know, us here today. Shakespeare made up his own. No What's, reason you can't. That's right. Shakespeare made up his own. No reason you can't. There you go. Well, thanks for joining us, and actually, for you're a, you're a returning guest to Face to Face, and that is just pretty darn cool. So, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for caring about what I do. Yeah, so well, you know what? Why don't we just step right into it? I mean, I've I've got lots of questions, but but uh, you know, connected to this this new initiative or relatively a new initiative that you're involved in, the cherrypicks dot com, and let's spell that out for everybody. It's going to be available, obviously, in the bio, and you guys will be able to find it there too. But it's the cherry, and it's p i c k s dot com. This is this is about movies. I mean, that we know for sure. Tell us more, Miranda. Yeah, so it's um, it's a place where all the female critics that are published are curated together, and we have a score um, 
of, you know, like kind of how like there's a scoring system for Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes. We have a scoring system as well, but ours is isolated to female or female identifying or non-binary critics that are published. Uh, so that's what we do. We have our own score. So that's where like, you know, as a girl or a woman, you can think, hey, what do, what do women think about this movie? Uh, women critics specifically at this time. And you can go and see that score. We also have um, a lot of our own content as well that we're doing. So is it really just about um, about creating a, a space, a, a, a different perspective? Is that a fair way to, to say it? Or just to you know, try to react no, against I, that, I don't know, white male no, critical perspective? No, neither. No, you know, <laughs> no, it's not against the white male thing or anything. It's really just kind of like, you know, I, I think of it like a magazine, you know, right. and everyone has its audience. You know, I don't particularly read GQ magazine, you know, um, but I love Marie Claire, right? So, you know, what GQ readers re think about this specific movie and what Marie Claire readers think about this specific movie are different because they have different points of view. And all this is doing is really getting in one place the point of view uh, of the female perspective on a movie uh, that's coming out. We do all the movies. You know, we do Ford versus Ferrari. It has a very high score. Um, it's a great film. <laughs> But there's a lot of movies, you know, that some male critics don't like uh, that women seem to love. Um, and a lot of movies that women don't like that that men seem to love. And I think that there's, you know, there's a it, you kind of as a consumer want to know what you are going to like. So this is just kind of finding a niche within the consumer market for female, um, you know, what females seem to like or not. Well, it's kind of interesting, you know, I mean, I, I would imagine you've been making films for a long time. And, and by the way, congratulations on the cherry picks. I think it's what I've what I've seen so far. Very cool. Uh, and it looks Thank like, you. yeah, it looks like I guess you're not going to get re reviewed on Rotten Tomatoes anytime soon. Is that right? Or Well, no, no. Rotten Tomatoes is similar in the sense that it, you know, they don't do their own reviews. They they collect. Um, they are uh, they um, they aggregate or they, they curate aggregate, exactly reviews that are already public. So you know that that's similar to what we're doing. We don't have our own reviewers. We do hire writers to write original editorial pieces or op-ed pieces about entertainment from a female perspective. And I know that there's like you know a million uh, platforms that have articles about movies. We are just one of them, and ours is about women's points of view on those movies. And is so so. Tell me the so the genesis the 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 seed for this was this. You know, you're sitting around after having seen a great film, uh, having a few drinks with somebody, and you go, you know what, we should do this. Or you you woke up <laughs> like where do, where does this no, come? I something mean, like kind this come of from? it was. Yeah, it kind it was like I mean, obviously, I've made a lot of movies, and I've gone through you know acting, directing, writing, uh, producing. I started a distribution company called the Film Arcade. So. You know, I've kind of been had my whole foot <laughs> instead right, of dipping right. a toe. I've had right. my whole foot in in many many aspects, and I had produced and was distributing a movie uh, that Lake Bell wrote and directed and starred in called "I Do Until I Don't," and it's a really cute movie. And she really made it for for women. You know, it's a it's a chick flick on many on every sense of the word, and. Um, I was reading reviews written by men and written by women, and they were really, really written in a different way. Um, and I just think that the male audience of critics, you know, they wrote things about how disappointed they were in her. It's almost like they were their dad, her dad or something, you know, like how whatever and how they wanted her to be more oddly uh, feminist or whatever it was they were expecting from her. Uh, and this was a movie about, you know, following, you know, a woman who, who didn't believe in marriage and then suddenly, or, and having a children and then felt, you know, decided that she did like it. So, um, I, I, a lot of my girlfriends really liked it. So I wanted to see like, well, what do the women think? And I could, I had to like comb through, you know, different articles and magazines and whatnot to find female, um, critics because the score on Metacritic or Rotten Tomatoes didn't reflect a very good female score because there weren't that many. And that's when I realized, like, oh, I, I there's not very many female critics that are on these sites. And if I want to see what a group of them think, there's no place for me to go. So then I thought, well, I'll make it. <laughs> 
Right. And we, and live, then, it, and we live in a day and age, and, and but now, that is not I, you so know, hard every to do. Every day of my life is yeah, consumed with this and trying to right. keep it going and have new ideas. And I don't know how this happened. I mean, how does life happen? How it's does crazy. Li- I know, isn't that? But that's so so cool, right? How how does life happen? I love that. <laughs> When you when you actually start to try to piece things together, some some of it makes sense, some of it not so much. Um, so so we've got run, don't walk. We got definitely worth the ticket. We got catch from your couch and the pits. Are they the sort of the they're, they're the four categories? Are they? Those are the four categories, and oddly enough, everybody's catching things from their couch nowadays. <laughs> right, of course, yeah, yeah. Um, and even our pits movies, you know, this is meant to be a filmmaker friendly site. Um, so even our pit, you know, cause I'm a filmmaker. So even our pit movies, you know, we sell it like everyone likes a pity movie every now and then. I mean, shark can't shark NATO is not a good film, but people love to watch it. <laughs> Glitter is not a good film, but people love to watch it. And so it's really about celebrating all the different kinds of films from the female perspective. Do you, so, so it, is it for you, would you say this, hmm, you used the word feminist earlier, you know, when, when somebody, when some critics were talking about a particular film, would you, would you put yourself in that category? Like, is this a, is, is this a strong, I mean, it doesn't look like it to me when you look at the site, it just looks like it's a lot of fun and it looks like it's, there's lots of good reading and lots of great ideas and thoughts about film, et cetera. But is it about the pendulum to some degree trying to, I don't know, balance that dark well, side of the force? Um, yeah, the force I mean. Well, I mean, yes and no. So yes and no. So yes, I'm a feminist. And I think anyone who believes that we should have equal pay and equal rights <laughs> uh, is a feminist, whether they want to call it that or not. Right, uh, yeah. I know that word <laughs> has a bad rap, but mm. I'm personally very proud of saying I'm a feminist. I'm also a humanist. Uh, I'm, you know, I, I, I believe everyone uh, deserves to be treated with respect and equally, but um so for me, you know, there, I've been in the movie business for many years and there's been a lot of talk and shouting about we need more women's stories and women directors and women's perspectives and women's this. And obviously, you know, I've done everything I can from making the movies to directing them myself, you know, to, you know, like doing everything I could. But at the end of the day, and I learned this as a distributor, at the end of the day, you are going to put out what the market um what the market wants, right? And so we've always run up against this wall as filmmakers of, oh, well, uh, you know, women's movies don't sell overseas or women of color can't lead a movie because no one buys those and no one goes to see those. And that's a bunch of crap. But it isn't a bunch of crap if the majority of people who are telling consumers what to buy Mm. are Caucasian male. So if you have... The people who are, you know, identifying with Caucasian male stories, the most people talking about movies, and that's what you should go see, then that's what movie makers are going to have to make. So this was about trying to find uh, the female uh, and women of color critics out there, which there are a lot of them. I bet. And show that they have their own voices and we have our own audiences as well. And we do go see movies. And we do, uh, you know, we're consumers. So um, it's really about leveling that. There's no way to get more women behind the camera or more people of color behind the camera or more stories of either if the gatekeepers, and I hate that word gatekeeper because it's not like they're really, they're not purposely standing in the way, but, you know, if the New York Times is publishing, you know, a white male critic on everything and you need to have, you know, Peter Travers as the only voice that matters or whoever, he's going to have a different perspective on things than, you know, um, Carla Renata, a Kirby critic. So there's, there's a big difference. So, so Miranda, are you are you looking for for writers? Then are you looking for people? Or are you going? Are you doing that hard work of going out and finding them to, and pulling them in? As you say, that that aggregation uh, notion of, of well, of, yeah, curating, if you will. We're, we have both. We have both. So we've been doing it for two years. We're on year three right now. So I guess two. We've been operating two years, and we're we're you know hoping to finish this next twelve months of year three, and now. So the first, at the beginning, of course, we were the ones going and finding the people and and, and collecting their their pull quotes and their, um, you know, 
know, reviews from, you know, the Boston Herald to the uh, black girl nerds or whatever it was that they were where they were. And now we actually have a, an official cherry picker, um, like application. So you, we still do, we still do aggregate, not aggregate, right. but collect from everywhere. Sure. Like Manola Dargan has a deal with the New York times. She can't become a cherry picker. We're still going to count her score in the score. Right, right. But we highlight the reviews of people who become cherry pickers. It's totally free. It's a way for them to put up um, their own page on our site. You can go and look up, you know, some cherry pickers. They are able to have their Patreon accounts there in case people want to donate to them so that they can keep writing reviews. Um, it has, a list of their work. If they're looking for a job, they can send that over as a page to get a job at a, at a paper or a place that might be hiring critics. Um, those are the, the cherry pickers are the ones that we kind of highlight at the, at the beginning of the film page, but we do aggregate, not aggregate, but curate all female and non-binary critics do you that we know about. That you know about. Do you, do you think, I mean, I think this is a pretty self-evident question on, on some level and, and maybe not on others, but the, the width and the breadth of, of the, uh, the, the female perspective. I mean, you know, as I was thinking about our interview and, and looking at the cherry picks, the, the cherry picks.com, by the way, folks, um, and going a little deeper, I started to think about what are some of those great le- uh, roles from my perspective, you know, uh, white male over here, podcaster, not really a critic, but love, loves film. And, and, and I came up with quite, quite a list in truth, you know, and some, some sort of indie, more indie like films. And then some of the bigger ones like Mad Max and the Hunger Games and this type of, you know, character representation and so on. But do, do you think there are, are things getting better? I guess, you know, you talked yeah, about that, you talked about are. that yeah. gatekeeper small G, yeah. you know? Yeah, they are getting better and people are talking about it. As long as people keep talking about it, then it, then things will be, as long as it's in the awareness, it'll change. Mm. You know, I, I, um, as you know, I have nothing against white men. I've slept with many of them, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> okay. So Miranda, every, uh, every day I look for <laughs> one soundbite, one soundbite a day for my kids or my wife or for something I'm reading. That's my soundbite. So thank you for that. I appreciate Great. that. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. I'll be tweeting um, that out later tonight, and, by the way. Great. Awesome. That's great. <laughs> That's right. I, I, That'd be great. True. Uh, <laughs> um, but I, you know, um, I do think it's getting better and I, but I do think movements, you know, help things get better. And I know that there's a backlash to movements. you know, the Me Too movement has its own backlash. Black Lives Matter has its own backlash. Time's Up has its own backlash, but backlash, but these are critical movements that start the conversation and without them we're not able to you know have have true equality without the conversation so but that has nothing to do with cherry pick necessarily <laughs> <laughs> no but it's but i think it's it is my- but it is a part of it right it's it's adding to it hey can i read this quote have you read any simone de beauvoir by any chance i studied philosophy for 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 many years and one of my favorite books is is uh the ethics of ambiguity by by de beauvoir uh, let, check this quote out I, i'm going to read it whether you want me to or not the, quote representation of the world like the world itself is the work of men they describe it for their own point of view which they confuse with absolute truth close quote isn't that great that's great. That's <laughs> it's great. so good. Again, clearly, she had a, <laughs> she clearly had a great sense of humor, wit, irony. But wow, could she 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 turn a phrase? Yeah. So so the pendulum swinging back, uh, or or it's um, middling out. Maybe uh, to to some degree, we're in the middle of this COVID crisis. Oh, I don't think I don't think it's middling out or anything. And I don't think it, let's I mean, not get too positive. Jobs, is what you're think... saying. <laughs> I, I think that people are more aware that they need to hire more females across the board and people of color across the board. I think that in Hollywood, I think that that is an awareness and that is where it starts. I think there's a lot of work to be done mm-hmm. to continue to do. And I think that we all, um, you know, make, you know, are, are indoctrinated so much that we make mistakes based on, you know, what we've, what we've learned in the, you know, learned in the past and what it is or isn't. And and I think that we have to be open to criticism and we have to be open to change. 
it's great. It's great. Open to criticism and open to change. Hey, can you tell me tell me a little bit about uh, you're working on another initiative and uh, uh, the film the film arcade is? It, can, can we chat about that a little bit in this new? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So tell, um, tell me more. I started. <laughs> I started the film arcade, which is a traditional theatrical distribution company. Um, after I was producing a lot of movies and selling them, um, and I was like, why am I selling these movies? They're gone for like 14 years. I don't have or 17 years and I don't have the right to do anything. I have consultation on how they look with their poster or whatever. So I started the film arcade to give filmmakers more of a say in the, um, in the process. Hmm. Um, but it was still traditional 90 day window, uh, you know, theatrical small theatrical indie films we did don't think twice was quite a successful one for us with mike rabiglia um we did jill soloway's afternoon delight she went on to go to um to transparent after that um we've had a lot of really great movies james white you know was uh, nominated for a spirit award so we've had like a lot of that great thing but you know at the same time there was a lot of really great movies that we passed over because we weren't our deal with, you know, our ancillaries did not give us the ability to do something called kind of day and date, or it goes in theaters at the same time that it goes on, um, on video on demand. Um, and so now that that's changing, I started a, um, a separate kind of fork or wing, I guess you would call it to the film arcade. And it's called the film arcade carousel. And this is specifically for, um, being movies that are under two million dollars from underrepresented stories or filmmakers that um, aren't getting the traditional distribution that they can actually self-distribute with our guidance and counsel um, through the carousel plan. So we would, you know, they would budget for it in their movies or they would raise the money, which is not a lot of money. We're not doing like traditional studio service deals, you know, $250,000 things at all. You know, we're really keeping in mind how do we help these filmmakers Mm. and what is the least amount that it will cost us to get it up? And that's what they would pay. So they're paying a small fee for our council and then they pay the small fee that we've made deals on with our you know, with the Amazons and iTunes and the um, Google Plays and whatnot. And then we've made special deals with, you know, publicists and special deals to get, you know, to be able to bring those prices down so that these filmmakers can actually get their movie out there. And if they want to put it in theaters, when theaters reopen, they can. And we'll help them do that. So is this something that that was has been sort of uh, uh, germinating for quite a while pre pre COVID, or is this? Uh... Well, it was happening. It was happening with other smaller companies that mm. that were not traditional theatrical. Um, Distribber was one. Go Digital was one. Those all went out of business, and they went out of business probably because that was their only model. I think that they too bad they went out of business because right now I think it's probably the best time. Uh, this pandemic, you know, has very very much proved, if anything, that people. Um, do still like watching movies at home and that the traditional distribution model needs to change. So um, this is just our way of making sure that we get these little movies seen before everything is drowned out by the big ones. So, so it's really interesting. I mean, you've been, you've been, it sounds great, by the way, you've been doing this a long time. Like you say, you, you put your full foot in, not just dipping your toes in and producing, directing, writing the, the, the whole works and so on, distributing. What, what, what's going on right now? Like, what's your sense? What's your, are we, you know, you, you used a pretty positive phrase there when, when we're going to be back in the theaters again. Uh, but, you know, we're also proving that, you know, people are paying to see films at home. So is there a sense, uh, do you, you know, with the people that you're talking to, do you have, sort of have a prophetic? <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, you sure, got a crystal, you got a crystal ball there? there sure. uh, I actually do have a crystal ball. Oh, um, nice. <laughs> Second <laughs> sound bite it. for the day. Second sound bite for the day. Let's ask it. Let's ask it. Hold on. Crystal ball. Are you sure, is it's it, called is Mr. Predicto. Will theaters go back to being the same again? Ah, there we go. <laughs> I was doubtful they will be the same again. And that's what I was also going to say. Right. Um, I think that the traditional model of 
theaters refusing films, because that's what they do. The exhibitors refuse films that do not have a 90-day window. Um, when that means like 90 days before they go on DVD, right? Traditionally, which now is called video on demand, right? And then video on demand has its own like, you know, set of uh, window or, or license time before right. it goes to SVOD, which is subscriber video on demand like Netflix or Hulu. So it would normally go to a theater, then three months later it would go to a video, then three months later or something it would go to Netflix, right? If Netflix would buy it. Or now there's going to be tons of more subscriptions. There's tons more SVODs out there. Netflix is definitely going to be having a lot of um, competition. Uh, there was talk about the Oscars and Spielberg didn't like it and wanted to keep the 90 day window because, you know, Netflix was having Roma play for two weeks mm. in a theater and then go on subscription video on demand. And that was like really shaking up things. And if this pandemic has taught us anything, it is that you can still have an excellent movie. You can still get excellent numbers. You will not necessarily get a good box office, you know, right. all the Roma did. Um, by playing at home as well. And um, the movies will be taken seriously, watched at home, just as they are in, in theaters. And I think for a long time, we've, as a, I'm not an exhibitor yet, but <laughs> never say never. Um, <laughs> exhibitors, it, it's been very scary as, the, as, as yeah. the change has happened because less and less people are coming and their, their ticket prices are just too damn expensive, right? And right now, I have to say, you know, Emma, 1999 for a rental for 48 hours, I think is too expensive. But guess what? We don't have a choice right now. Right. <laughs> we want to see Emma. <laughs> but they're getting that price out of VOD, so I'm curious how that's going to be. But I think, I think the exhibitors just have to make it, you know, more of a, you know, can't just have a, a theater anymore. You know, you got to have do what ArcLight did and have a restaurant or do what uh, Alamo Draft House has and serve beer and like have it really be a destination and a place to go out in order for people to want to go out and spend the, spend the money because we do have the option to see it at home now. You know, but it's, it's really small interesting. Small movies have not had the opportunity to right. play in those theaters anyway because right. they've been sucked up by the big ones. Yeah, they've been kind of shut out. I know there's a, there's a couple small small theaters like that in Toronto here that, that, that do play those you know, types of films, yeah. the indie films, they do get a theatrical as it were. Um, There's not many art house theaters left in the world. Right. There really aren't. Yeah. Dif dif difficult way to make a living for, for sure. I was, it's interesting. My wife, Elizabeth this morning was telling me a story about, um, she's like, Oh wow. Finally, some positive news coming out of this, this crisis. And I guess B and B has got somebody in, uh, wait for it. I can't think of where it was. Anyway, where did Chernobyl happen? It was in the Ukraine, I believe. Anyway, he's, he's doing, he's doing video. <laughs> Chernobyl. Yeah. Chernobyl. Chernobyl's in Chernobyl. <laughs> that's right. He's doing these video, <laughs> video tours. And so the dogs of Chernobyl. So there's a pair, I guess there's a lot of stray dogs or whatever. Anyway, so 10 people, it's going to cost you X amount of dollars. He'll take you live for your 90 minute tour and you log on to some sort of Zoom call or something like that. I mean, it's just a, it, really interesting. And, and it, it, there's obviously right now, there's a little bit of a demand for that kind of thing. Could that actually change the way we do travel in the future? You know, I mean, and, and well, now, travel, now no, I don't think so. I, don't, I hope not no. personally, but for some, maybe. I right? think it, what it does is it changes the way we see content. Got and it. that yeah, is what it's is good. key. And um, that is, you know, the invention of digital was the same big, you know, uh, you know, you know, like film was like gone. Right. And right. Never again. Taking yeah. over. And film is coming back. I mean, granted, I was. You know, we're all, our productions are shut down, but one of our movies we were going to shoot on film. So, film is coming back. Uh, DVDs, actually, people are starting to collect DVDs like they collect um, records and LPs. LPs I, lo I came love the back. collection. You know, thing. you go to the LP store. Yep. So, but my big thing is, is when, you know, I didn't invent this phrase or anything, but I live by this phrase, which is what doesn't bend breaks. Mm. And if you cannot be flexible and learn how to pivot and say plot twist, Okay, and keep reading. <laughs> You're gonna die. Your business will die. Your relationships will die. You know, you gotta, you gotta like 
learn how to go with the flow a little bit. And Hollywood has to do the same. Are you are you making any money off the cherry picks? Is it is it is it paying some bills for you? Is it is it long term kind no, of? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet, <laughs> but it's new. It's a yeah. startup. Yeah, for sure. Um, so my my hope is to. I mean, we do have ways to um, make uh, some income now. There's links that are green on the site that will take you to something you can buy, which we would get like a little kickback or like if you bought a movie ticket or right. watched iTunes through, through our site, we'll get a little oh, cool. something. I'm talking like 26 cents here. Okay? <laughs> right. but, it's a lot of movies. You yeah. know, the more and more people, you know, the more as the site grows and the more mm-hmm. and more people who do that, then we will be able to sustain ourselves. You know, we have enough funding to last us, you know, through the next 20 something months. And, you know, Maybe someone will buy us. Maybe we'll get investors. Maybe it'll be maintaining on its own by then. You know, we have advert. We I've stayed away from advertising um, thus far because I don't like it aesthetically, and I I want the content to be good first, and I want to find unique ways of advertising. Um, and we have some really unique ways to advertise for, through movies and stuff. Now you can buy a takeover and has like your image play on the front page and stuff like that and do a co- sponsored collection you know so like my movie that i directed called being frank is about a guy who was you know had the secret family so we made a collection called lovable liars so there's a movie of lovable liars and it was sponsored by the film arcade um and that movie like plays first those kinds of things right. that um that the studios will be able to use and obviously we want our license. We want our score to be out there. You know, we, I feel that our score should be licensed just like the Rotten Tomatoes mm. score or the meta, you know, the Metacritic score that gets licensed for iTunes and whatnot. I, th- I think our score should be there as well, but we need more people to know about us before that. Yeah, absolutely. Happen. I would say it's just a matter of time and, and some, it you, is. Know, you certainly got the passion and the commitment and the intention. That's for sure. And, and I really wish you well with it. So, hey, uh, but just before we wrap up here, uh, give me a couple of rundown walks that 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 my listeners might be interested in going to see, or sitting downstairs and seeing. Yeah. Well, you know, we have a newsletter actually that comes oh, out every cool. Friday that you can sign up for on our website. Nice. And that actually, what you know, like instead of just rundown rocks, like what we do is we do something called the cherry pick choices. So these are kind of like when you used to go to the video store. And like the people who work there were like, I like this movie. So we have cherry pick choices. Um, that's our first thing when you go to the website. And those are not score dependent. Those are dependent on what we, all the girls who work at cherry picks, like think is the best one that they want to see this weekend. Oh, cool. So if you go there and you look right now, um, there's um, lots of different movies that are small and coming out. Obviously, I want to see Trolls and I will be doing the Troll Watch Party. Um, <laughs> through DreamWorks is happening with my kids. But then there's this movie called Banana Split that um, is out on VOD that is really cute and really good. And we just had Hannah, who's the star of it, on our Instagram Live today. Um, so we get to talk to the actors in the movies as well. So that's, I would say, just go to, go to the, the website and you'll see the choices. And then and right under that, the you get to see all the, all the new releases. For and obviously all of our releases are now uh, at home because they're not at the theater, but they were theatrical releases. Right. Um, how about- and I don't know what we'll do. When we go back. Uh, we'll probably we'll probably do. Um, I don't know. I think we'll probably add one that's just theaters. I don't know. So hard to say where it's all heading. How about for you? Can you, uh, I, I, as I was looking at some of the material on the site and so on, what are what are some of your sort of fave, uh, strong female lead films? Can, can you toss a couple um, of Well, female lead films, I actually have an article on the website under the original stories that is my favorite female directed film. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, you're getting very um, specific. You know, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there's, you know, I, I would say go there and, and take a look at those and there's those. But my female story, my favorite female story movies, I'm reading those traditional, you know, chick flicks, Legally Blonde, <laughs> um, Bridesmaids. I loved A Simple Plan also. Uh, I thought that was hilarious. Um, 
in terms of female stories, those um, female directed Diary of a Teenage Girl. Mm. I love Honey Boy. Honey Boy is great if you haven't seen it yet. Nope, haven't. Uh, the Farewell is my favorite movie of last year. Oh, okay, cool. That's female story and female director as well. And how about a how about a female lead or a female character? Anyways. Well, that's the farewell. Oh, okay. Farewell. Okay. Aquafina. Okay. Aquafina. No. I thought you might have picked Clarice in Silence of the Lambs, but it's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> No. Well, there's so many out there, and 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 uh, I hope uh, I hope that CherryPicks.com uh, goes through the roof in the, in the very near future, and you go way beyond your 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 original uh, plan. And um, and thank thank. I don't have any plans. You don't have any plan. <laughs> well, maybe that's... I don't have any plans. I'm just like, let's see if this works. Let's I see. I find it less less disappointed when I don't have a plan, and I just try to see if something will work or not. Funny. Well, I think that's some pretty good life advice as well, Miranda, I think. <laughs> Listen, thanks for your time today. I really appreciate it. I mean, I know we're all kind of stuck in our homes uh, uh, for the most part, uh, getting out a little bit here and there, I suppose. I hope you're handling, how are you handling the crisis? You doing okay? Well, I have to say I'm really, uh, I'm really lucky. You know, I, I really, I'm actually quite, even though it's, you know, I feel so sad for the people that I know or even that I don't know that, that have been sick. I've been really blessed because I love um, my kids and my husband and my cats. And I travel so much that I, I've never really gotten to be home. Mm. And I'm now just loving it. And I'm also very lucky that with the cherry picks and with film arcade right now, we can still pay our employees and we can still keep operating. And same with cold iron pictures. We're developing um, and writers are still writing. So I'm really grateful that I haven't had to like furlough anyone or let anyone go and that we can keep operating. I, I, I'm lucky I don't own a restaurant is all I can say. Yeah, no kidding. Well, listen, congratulations and, and wishing you well with it all. TheCherryPicks.com. It's P-I-C-K-S.com. Check it out. Sign up for the newsletter. And uh, we've been talking uh, with Miranda Bailey today, a filmmaker, distributor. Uh, you're going to become an exhibitor soon too, right? Isn't that what you said? <laughs> Someday yeah. before I die, I will have a theater, an art house theater somewhere. Yes, somewhere. but who knows where I'll end up. Right. I mean, could be on the moon for all I know. <laughs> well, thanks so much for your time First today. First theater on the moon. That's First, what I well, There you go. No. That wouldn't take too much uh, <laughs> money to capitalize. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for your time today, Miranda. Thank you so much.